name is Lisa Plagemeyer. Funny thing happened on the way to SAN Securing the Human. I'm no longer with CDK Global. But I did get their um, permission from CDK Legal to present this today, and I'm exploring a lot of opportunities. There's a lot of movement in the market right now, and, and I am enjoying some much-needed time off. So if you were here last year uh, when I spoke, we looked at a casting video of a guy named Pavel in a campaign called Do Yes or Do No, and we were in the ideation phase. Well, Pavel came to life. Um, this is the article that ran in our newsletter. I'll just read it for you in case you can't make it out from the back. Uh, do Yes or Do No gaming show with Pavel coming soon. We are pleased to announce an exciting new security quiz show produced by the CDK Global Security Organization, hosted by Bulkrania's most loved television and online personality, Pavel Dragunov. Pavel started his career starring in many surveillance videos. He's since moved on to hosting reality shows such as who in this van can swallow the most diamonds quickly? And which is your least favorite finger? <laughs> do Yes or Do No is his breakout game show. He is very excited, just look at him. So that went to, that link down there in the bottom left, went to a teaser video about the campaign that was on our, on our portal. The, just the campaign in a nutshell, it was a cheesy 70s game show theme um, we hope to develop the characters and the intrigue enough that we could stretch it for six to 12 months to leverage our spend. I did have a champagne budget, unlike uh, the last speaker. It takes all kinds, right? Anything works. Um, we had about $100,000, but out of that we got 16 videos. We had one day of taping, which is important to keep it on budget. Um, and that included a live event in five locations. I'll, I'll uh, talk more about that later. Um, but 55% of our employees watched that first teaser video. That was unheard of for, for corporate comms. So this is our friend Pavel, um, smiling, charming, but he's got these finger tattoos and these neck tattoos sticking out, and you're not quite sure what to make of this guy. Is that smile genuine or is that genuinely evil? Um, when we play the game show, it's clear he's here to help us. He's got all this great advice. Um, but we're not sure how we feel about him. And that's exactly what we were going for, is that intrigue. I'm not sure how I feel about this guy. That's what, that's what got us the eyeballs. When you play the game show, he seems to know an awful lot about a lot of bad stuff, even though he seems like he's here to help us. So what was his background maybe, right? There's, there, we were going for that intrigue, not, just not being sure how you feel about him, that ambivalence. Um, I'll show you a short compilation video in a, in a minute, but just in a nutshell, as I said, we, we spent one day filming. We got about 16 one to three minute videos out of that one day shoot. For the shoot, we used a combination of actors and employees. Uh, we took about 100 still shots, like the one you see here, we used those for uh, banners on our employee portal, posters, digital signage, um, thumbnails for newsletter articles, and then of course we had swag. We had um, baseball caps, do yes or do no stickers, which I still have a huge supply of if anybody wants one. And um, in true Pablo fashion, we did rub on temporary do yes or do no tattoos. When we did the live game show, uh, well, we released about four videos over the course of about four or five weeks, and then we started promoting the live event in five different locations. When we did the live game show, um, we realized that, you know, that Pavel was already sort of recognized by a lot of people because we'd been getting good view rates on the, those first couple of videos. So we decided to see if people would let him tailgate in in the morning. Um, there's another character you'll meet named Brian, who's kind of the perfect victim to Pavel's thinly veiled aggression. He's kind of the bumbling fool, so uh, we discovered him during the taping. He was just uh, hired as a local actor. He'd done improv comedy and improv acting, as had the Pavel character. So when you put those two guys at your front door in the morning, Pavel in his suit with his tattoos, a cup of coffee, and a cell phone, keeping in mind this is a, a software company where people usually come in in jeans and a t-shirt, you would be amazed at how many people will hold the door open for somebody holding a cup of coffee and a cell phone. So the reactions ranged all the way from, um, I know you, you're the guy from those videos, I'm not gonna let you in, all the way to, I'm not security, it's not my problem that I just let this guy in. 
Um, but the Brian character would stand on the inside, you know, as Pavel was cruising in behind somebody, and he would say, you know, kind of ham it up, you know, did you just let that guy in? He looks really scary. Is he with you? So we did it in a way that wasn't threatening. You've got two guys that are used to doing improv. So, um, so it was actually kind of fun. So then we would pay, play the live game show during the bulk of the day. People could just drop in, play for as little or as, as, as much as they wanted to. And then in the afternoon, when you get that like 3, 3.30, 4 o'clock lull in the office, is it time to go home yet? We had Pavel take his cheesy fake 70s microphone and Pavel and the Brian character and I just walked up and down the cube farms and would sort of randomly ask people security quiz show questions and you kind of got that prairie dog effect in the cubes and if you prairie dog then you better be sure that Pavel's going to be coming at you with the microphone to ask you a question. So that went over really well as well. So let's take a look at uh, what some of the videos look like. Hello, and welcome to Do Yes or Do No, the game show that tests your knowledge of internal securities of where you are now working, CDK. I am host Pavo. I know what is bad. The nose. Brian, let's get to you. Do you have animal pets? Uh, yeah, a cat. Uh, her name, uh, Buttons. How adorable. Hold, please. Is this your company email? Yeah, how did you get... <laughs> Bill, what is Brian's company email password? Buttons. Buttons123. I give you partial credit. Good job, Bill. <laughs> Brian, I do not hack. Napoleon was a hacker. Yeah. Don't be a Napoleon. Be an Alexander. Oh, like Alexander the Great. No, <laughs> Alexander! Email shows up. It's an electronic greeting card from Babushka. Babushka been dead many years. Brian. Uh, oh, well, I, I miss my grandma. Maybe it got lost in the server. No, stupid man. That is a scam. You get scammed and you compromise company. Right, right. Sorry. No points for you. Okay. Here are your points. Ulrich, I send you email with attachment. Okay. Do you open attachment? Do I know you? No. No one could know Pavel. No, I would not open it. Do you tell GSO? Uh, no, I think I'll just ignore it. That's good, Ulrich. That's very good. <laughs> That's not a good good, is it? No, it is not. It is not a good good. <laughs> I just peed a little. <laughs> and we're back. Jill, this question is for you. You receive an email offering large sum of money in return for many company secrets and passwords. Do you take the money? Honestly, I do not even know why we have this question. In the amount of pause you give me, I will consider yes and I will weep for your soul. Oh my, of course not, no. Thank you, Jill. Hey, uh, how much money are we talking here though? Like... <laughs> So those are kind of some snippets from the best of. As you can imagine, we had a blast taping this when we, when we had the Brian character show up, the actor, and saw how well he went with the Pavel character. There was no question we had to take Brian um, on the road with us, right? So why is this edgy? Anybody? So we're kind of picking at Eastern European stereotypes here, aren't we, right? Um, we knew this, we acknowledge this, right? I mean, I, this might not be a fair comparison, but I'm of German descent, I lived in Germany for 13 years and I grew up watching reruns of Hogan's Heroes and it never occurred to me to be offended by Hogan's Heroes, right? It's comedy, it's fiction, it's made up, right? Um, but nonetheless, there are sensitivities around this stuff, right? So 
we prepped for this, we discussed it at length, all the executives, all of HR, the executives in the individual locations where we were doing the live events, HR business partners, HR vice presidents, the entire C-suite, right? We talked about it at length. We had uh, legal sign off, do the reasonable person test. Will a reasonable person be offended by this, right? Um, we even put a disclaimer at the beginning of each video, talking about how this was a fictional character from a fictional place. Um, so we, we acknowledged it up front, and I loaded the lips of all the executives, right? So as I said, the first video goes out, we get a 55% uh, view rate, and corporate comms decided, corporate comms left the comments turned on on the portal. Marketing's advice was to turn it off, uh, and corporate comms said, no, we'll leave it on. Okay, fine. So we had one mildly, you know, I don't think this is very PC type comment. Um, by the third video, we had 1,800 views in the first five hours by the third week, right? So we've definitely gotten some engagement. I go to Chicago, we do the first live event, that's our headquarters, kind of a stuffy atmosphere, but still, all the senior executives played, lawyers played, everybody had a good time. Uh, two days later, we get on the road, we go to Cincinnati, where we have a large office. Um, people love the Brian character. They're, they love to cheer for an underdog, right? So we had people, you know, Brian for president, it was, which was great because then people in the audience started cheering Brian for President Pavel under his breath and his microphone in his Eastern European accent said, we can make that happen. Um, so, so working with improv comedians is a blast, believe me. So anyway, we had this line out the door, and any of you that do events, you know it's exhausting, right? Um, but line out the door, people would, from a department would come play, and then they go back and tell their coworkers, and then more people would, would come. And so by the end of the day, it's, it's late. I'm flying back to Austin that night. I'm in Cincinnati, so that means I got change planes in Houston. I get on the plane, 7.30 at night. I'm not gonna be home until probably midnight. I decide, but I'm thrilled. I'm just thrilled. It couldn't have gone any better. I sit down in my seat on the plane, and I decide to check my email one more time before I shut off my phone. And this is what I see. This is the subject line of an email from a VP of HR to my boss and to me. So I spent the rest of that flight, as you can imagine, pretty crapped out, right? Because I just thought I came off of a, a great day, right? So unbeknownst to me, while I was playing the game in Cincinnati and didn't have time to look at the employee portal that day, um, there were a few more negative comments from one particular individual, and then a few more people that chimed in with him and then, as is often the case in America these days, this groundswell of people with an opposing opinion, hey, this stuff is great, are you kidding? Do you want to go back to boring security stuff? Like, we love this. Um, and so there was this debate going on and a little bit of controversy, and that's what caused the HR VP to send this email. So I get home that night, and I do a little research on the one guy that's sort of um, started the whole thing, right? The guy who was the most outspoken and, and negative about it. And I do, a, um, I do a search on him on the uh, employee portal. I wanted to see his picture. He works in the Cincinnati office. And I thought, wouldn't it be something if he actually played the game that day? What if he came in late in the day and actually played and had a good time and sort of changed his mind? Like, who knows? I'd like to see if he was actually there. Do I recognize this guy? So nothing against nose rings. But when I look him up on the employee portal, I couldn't see him because the only, his picture was just a close-up of his nose ring. So you can't make this stuff up, right? Um, so I do Google images, and I get to his wide open Facebook page, and saw his picture there and glanced at a post he had done just in the few days previous. And he had shared a story about an uh, angry mob of farmers in India who had set some elephants on fire. There was a really graphic image, horrible story about these elephants, terrible thing. But what got me was the comments that he posted um, along with that story. And I'll, and I'll read you what he posted. Where are the mass shootings when you need one? F you humans, I hate you. So this is obviously somebody who's an upset individual, you know, kind of lives his life in a very angry place. This made for a very interesting call with that vice president of HR the next morning because who should own the security culture in our organization? 
a, one small, very vocal individual, or is it the security organization who's trying to change the culture, trying to make security fun? And I, and I neglected to mention, the thing we're trying to get is engagement in this campaign. That was our number one goal. And we certainly got engagement, right? Um, there were a few other people that had chimed in with him on the portal. And just out of curiosity, I looked at their training records to see if they had completed you know, training, how'd they do on phishing, like how sort of security aware are these folks? And I'm sure this is anecdotal, but I wouldn't be surprised if across the board it proved out. The two or three people that had posted negative comments, none of them had taken a single assigned security training module, ever. These are those people that you chase to be compliant, right? The ones that you keep sending the emails to to try and their managers and their managers' managers to try and get them to participate. So these people who never took their training watched every one of those Pavel videos. I had all the click-through data I could see, you know, who watched what. So I got eyeballs from people on security content that normally you couldn't get to engage. So for me, that was a win, right? So needless to say, we kept rolling. We did not stop the program. Um, but this is the lesson learned. Internet trolls are a thing. The marketing department was right. Do not leave comments turned on on the portal. So after this, we turned off comments um, and we kept going. So a little bit about metrics. Of course, I had all kinds of metrics on how many people viewed the videos and all that good stuff. But um, we had just started our phishing program right before we kicked off Pavel. So we did that first mock fish, right, where people click and uh, get a 404 error instead of a teachable moment. And we did our first real fish, real fake fish, um, about three months, three to four months into, into the Pavel campaign. Um, we were able to cut our click rate in half. And we upped the report rate by 250% in three months' time. So I have to believe that Pavel, we, I'm sure we would have eventually gotten to those results, but I think Pavel was like a fast forward button. And when you think about that 100 grand that we spent, um, if I think about all the tools and the technology that our security folks are so quick to, to purchase, right, to protect the company, at that point, you know, for me to be able to go to the CISO and the CIO and say, you know, hey, give me 100 grand and I'll be able to click your, <laughs> cut your click right in half in, in three months, would you do it compared to what you're spending on all the technology and the tools? I, I think a lot of them would do it in a heartbeat. Right, those are, those are pretty strong results. So this warmed my heart. This was a couple months into the campaign. I'm sitting at my desk and we encourage people to report incidents any which way, right? Like we have emails, we have phone numbers. Ping me on IM, that's, that's fine. Just any which way you can report things, we want you to report things. And this came from a person who reported an incident. Ping me on IM, worked in accounts payable, not a place you wanna hear about an incident coming from, right? Turned out to be a, kind of a data incident, a human error incident, but you never know at the outset, right? So, um, so I thanked her for reporting it, and she pings me back because of that Pavel Dean show I thought I should. That's the engagement we wanted, right? So that, that warmed my heart. So how do you do edgy? Every company, every person, every organization has a brand. And I think you have to start by being honest to that brand. So what is the perceived brand of your organization? Not what the security people all say about themselves, but what do the rest of the employees in your organization think of the security folks? We were too closed off. We wanted to be more fun, more engaging. You know, we want people to come talk to us, whether it's AppSec or physical security or whatever it was, we just wanted more engagement. So what would your employees say about you? Are you the department of no? Are you the policy police? Are you the good guys fighting crime? Like, what is the current perception? And start with that and be honest about that, right? Own that and then find a way that you can change it or turn it on its head somehow. I'll give you an example that predates Pavel. Um, CDK used to belong to ADP, the big payroll processor. And four or five years ago, before it was spun off, they had the traditional one hour um, annual security training. Nobody liked it, everybody hated it. You click through it while you're on a conference call or something, right? So when I joined the security organization for marketing, I said, we're gonna change that, we're gonna do something completely different. 
But I use that dislike of the training program to, to change perception, to capitalize on getting more engagement. So we chose Wombat uh, that has the, the cyber strength assessment, right? It's a pretest. And we sent out that pretest and we said to everybody, if you get 80% or more on all the topics covered in this pretest, you won't need to take any more security training. People hate security training, so they're like, awesome, give me my pretest, right? So what's the dirty little secret about the pretest? It's training in and of itself. So then we had people come back, they'd get their training assignment after they did however they did on the assessment, and then they'd call, and they'd email, and they'd reach out to all these people in the security organization, wanting to argue about the finer points of one of the questions or one of the answers, because maybe they missed by just a few points. So what is all that? What were all those calls and emails? Engagement, exactly. We had people talking to the security department that would never normally talk to us because we capitalized on the fact that everybody hates security training, right? So we took a negative brand attribute and turned it into something positive. If you do something edgy, not everyone is gonna like it and that has to be okay. The definition, you know, by definition, it's not gonna be everybody's cup of tea. I'm not talking about willfully, being willfully offensive. Um, there's a fine line between being edgy and offensive. Edgy makes you want to engage and offensive just turns you off. So there's a great article if you download the presentation later out there called How to Be Edgy Without Alienating Your Customers and I won't go into detail but um, good article. This is just a piece of Lisa's general advice, video, video, video. Video. Having come from the world of advertising and marketing, I can tell you people love it, um, and it's not changing. So, some of the recent stats, um, 100 million hours of video are watched on Facebook every day. In 2017, 75% of all internet traffic was video streaming. A video tweet is six times more likely to be retweeted than a photo tweet. Um, keep it short, one to two minutes. We neglected to post an archive at the beginning of all the Pavel videos. I didn't realize how many people would want to binge watch Pavel if they <laughs> hadn't seen everything, so we made sure to set up um, an archive. So control the message as best you can, even though in the world of social media, we loaded those executives' lips, right? If somebody said, you know, I, I don't like this, you know, I find this offensive to Eastern Europeans, whatever it was, culturally insensitive, we made sure that all of our executives, HR, business partners, everybody, knew how to engage that person one-on-one -on -one in a conversation and turn that conversation into a discussion about security and how do you feel about it, as opposed to, you know, I'm offended because I don't like Pavel's accent or, or whatever it would be. So you can manage those situations one-on-one -on -one and not let them snowball. And then finally, carry the campaign through everything you do. Um, we very recently had a rash of smash and grab laptop theft and so this was a, a, some digital signage I created and we used it in the newsletter as well. If you remember last year I spoke about Ad Age, uh, an Ad Age article, Ad Age is a great publication if you need creative inspiration, that there was a new product being sold in the advertising market and it was seven second ads. And those actually happened, right? If you watched the Winter Olympics or the NFL, there were these split screen you know, during the huddle you'd see this little, little seven second ad pop up because Americans' attention spans are so tiny, right? Seven seconds. So the beauty of this is that once you've developed a character and you've gotten intrigue and, and you've really permeated with your message, do you need more than seven seconds to get the, the idea of this poster? So little copy and it says so much, right? You're only gonna get their attention for a few seconds. So I was, I was, uh, I was thrilled with how we were able to, to leverage this. And have fun, most of all, just have fun. That's it.